So we just got to Boulder, came straight to Ozo, got a Cortado, Americano, and a drip. So let's see uh, how it is. Ozo Coffee was the winner of Best Coffee Roaster, Best Coffee Shop, and Best Latte in Best of Boulder 2013. So we wanted to find out more. So how long have you guys been roasting for? Uh, we've been roasting since 2009. Like when I started, we were doing about 400, 500 pounds a week, mm -hmm. just pro providing to our one store. Mm -hmm. And then um, we had a couple of accounts that we were just in the works with. And um, once that took off, then we had made enough profit to open the second store. And then when that happened, everything just kind of exploded. So now we're doing yeah. 2,000 pounds a week. We have about 68 accounts, something like that. And you guys have this one roast. Yeah, we have one, it's one little IR12. I mean, I've handwritten all of the labels for the last few years. We're finally going to get stamps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, we've been very bare bones and just building up. I noticed in your shop, it, you, your uh, employees were really friendly. I mean, totally. it seemed pretty ego-free. As a company philosophy, that's something that we, we put that at the forefront of um, the training and just of mm -hmm. the general way that we interact with people. And, like, being that we have been involved in the bigger parts of the coffee industry, there's definitely somewhat of a stereotype, yeah. um, and I think that for Ozosians, as we call it, <laughs> Ozosians, we, we try to break that stereotype. Our articulation goes over the counter to our customers. Mm -hmm. it, we're finding that we are really like finding some of the mas most amazing connoisseurs and people coming out of the woodwork that never felt comfortable before mm -hmm. asking questions. So we're here at Boxcar Coffee Roasters. I'm gonna taste uh, a Cortado so I can suss out the espresso and then I'll go for a drip. This was no ordinary drip. This is one of the most innovative coffee brewing systems I'd seen. And damn, that coffee was hot. It's hot. It's hot. So yeah, this is our pride and joy here. Yeah. This roaster was, it's a little bit of a mystery because these things came all the way from Germany. There's not that many of them in the United States, but this one in particular, the guess is around 1929 it was built. Wow. Because it's so heavy, there's so much cast iron in it that um, it's really, it's really just, it really retains a lot of heat, just like a wood stove would. Mm -hmm. And um, at this elevation, we have heat dissipation, like more than most places. Mm -hmm. The lower you go, the more heat is retained in the in the drum and inside the machine. So I, I saw something walking in, uh, uh, I don't even know what to call it, a little chemistry boiling, <laughs> yeah. what's going on there? Well, we call it the boiler maker. The boiler maker. Yeah. So you can see we are makers of coffee. This is a technique by which we boil it. Mm -hmm. That is our uh, one-of-a-kind coffee brewing system here. We've developed it because of our elevation. Water boils at 203 here. Oh, wow. This is much lower than all yeah. the other sort of by-the-cup coffee methods or anything that's by-the-cup sort of takes for, takes for granted that your water's hot. Like a nice high-grown dense coffee that's not dark roasted needs some heat or something to get it to taste good. And so what we've sort of done is adapted uh, cowboy coffee. Whereas we're in, we boiled the coffee in the water, so once it's boiling, we're at 203. Yeah. And um, we just manage how long that boils for to extract enough of those carbohydrates to get a sweet cup of coffee. And then we quench it with ice, just a few ice cubes to stop the boiling and to stop the brewing process or slow it down considerably. And it actually causes the grounds to settle to the bottom of the pot so we can pour it through a little strainer and get a pretty clean cup. And that's that. Killer. The final stop in Boulder brought us to a man with a background in chemical engineering and computer science. And he also happened to grow up with wolves. 
My parents run a wildlife sanctuary called Mission Wolf. They take care of wolves and wolf dogs, and I literally grew up in the middle of nowhere taking care of wolves. He combines a mix of artistry and chemistry to yield an amazing cup of coffee. On a real true production day, we could do around 300 pounds a day. So it may look small, but mm -hmm. it can actually really produce a lot of coffee. Uh, one thing that I love telling people is that one, ser one cup of coffee, one 12 ounce cup, not, not your regular eight ounce cup, has the equivalent serving of antioxidants as that of three servings of blueberries. Wow. So, you know, coffee is the most complex beverage that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis. It has over 850 chemical components that comprise the flavor and the aroma that we perceive. It reduces the risk of stroke. It reduces the risk of, of cardiac arrhythmia. Mm -hmm. um, and you think, oh, well, it raises my blood pressure. It's a stimulant. How does it do that? This is not just one or two studies. This is based off of you know 15 to 20 years of double-blind research that's been done. And it's just amazing mm -hmm. how much um, there is benefit to our health with coffee. So this is our yoga chaps. Cheers, absolutely. And for us, it's all about the education. It's about teaching people from seed to cup the journey, you know, the hundreds of hands, the, the effort, the labor, the one cent that that farmer is making versus the two bucks that's going per cup of coffee. You know, the average Kenyan coffee farmer in 2012 made $1,200 as his annual salary. The average American coffee wow. consumer bought $1,400 of brewed coffee for themselves a year. So putting that into perspective is where a lot of our passion is derived on helping allow those economies to flourish. All right, so Bolivia. We love science, we love art, and we love blending them, so. Yeah, yeah. So this is our Bolivian organic, and as you can see, it's a totally different it's deal. Awesome. You know, it's a totally different mouthfeel. It's a really damn good cup of coffee. Thank you. All the health benefit I was talking to you about earlier is really shown in moderate to high consumption. So between four to six cups of coffee per day is where they're showing the most benefit. Really? Yeah, from a health standpoint. So, so the, from a health standpoint, it's better to do four to six. Now, <laughs> that 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 is not because of the caffeine. I will I will say it's because of all of the uh, chemical components of coffee the antioxidants inherent in the, in the beans so even decaf offers that same benefit 